I uh, have a 2014 Ram 2500 with a 6.7 Cummins. I have about 106,000 miles on the odometer. Mostly just use a truck for work and a little bit of play. But about 2,000 miles ago or 1,500 miles, I started having the exhaust brake uh, start to not function like everyone else. And so I uh, tried a couple different things, recommendations uh, online to clean it with no success. And so I decided to go with the turbo replacement. So we ended up going with the ATS. It's a VFR uh, Roar 3000. It's supposed to be a direct bolt-in replacement. And uh, so I just want to share my experience on that. So at the same time, we uh, replaced the hot side intercooler tube, which travels from the turbo uh, to the intercooler. So they put that bend or that crimp in there to make way for the factory air box. And so when we went to an aftermarket air box for re a cleanable filter, we decided to use an aftermarket uh, hot side tube as well. And that worked out to be pretty good. But let's see, tips I would recommend would be, we obviously pulled off the tire in the, the fender well. Um, <clears throat> someone else had recommended moving these transmission lines so this goes to our cooler, our transmission cooler. There's uh, two of them, and there's three brackets that hold this down. I think there's one up here. Um, there's gonna be another one on the back side of this frame rail, and then there's another one a little bit further down. And by disconnecting those, that was huge. There's also a couple of these cords that get in the way here. So these need to be stretched up uh, out of the way. Uh, on top of this uh, shock tower back in here, if you can see. Because if they are resting on that frame rail, uh, it is gonna cause you problems. And then with those three brackets disconnected, the transmission lines go to a flexible line on both of them. So these ended up having to uh, get pushed forward just a few inches. And by doing that, they were able to uh, get the clearance that you need, which is gonna be right on the bottom there, which is going to be in between the bottom of this uh, actuator and the frame rail of the truck. And so when you're rolling in the turbo, there's three posts that are on the turbo, and then there's one post that's actually on the exhaust manifold. And that, that fourth post is going to be behind that one on the front there. And so I actually unscrewed that fourth post from the exhaust manifold and rolled in these three and that seemed to be uh, enough of a challenge. Then obviously you're gonna have to disconnect all your oil fuel or coolant lines and your oil lines. Um, but the one tip that I could recommend and someone else, I think I read it on a online post on some sort of form, but they were talking about these transmission lines and <clears throat> that really was the cat's meow. So I remember reading on one of the forums, he said, when you start doing this project, uh, you're gonna invent a new curse word and uh, I laughed pretty hard at that and sure enough it, it lived up to its reputation so and also the uh, yeah, I almost forgot there's the oil drain line that you can see there and it has a small little gasket that goes onto this accordion style tube that has two o-rings that drops back down into your engine block right there and so I found it was actually easier to uh, once I had the turbo loosely uh, pulled out, I took that accordion style tube and attached it, the oil drain tube, to the turbo and there was enough clearance in there to mount it that way. I tried it the other way and was having problems getting those two little screws. They were actually like starting to strip out just because of the angle in the bottom. There's just too much stuff in the way. You just can't get to it. So I found by connecting that before I actually threw the turbo in was huge. And then there's also a return uh, coolant line on the front side of this turbo. I don't know if we can see it. There's a return coolant line that goes into the block back there on the banjo bolt. And so uh, by connecting both of those on the turbo and then installing it, uh, that seemed to be the best way. So I tried it the other way and was not having success. And so I think after the fourth or fifth, sixth, tenth time I attempted it, uh, it did work. So. These turbos are a direct replacement 
I was uh, beginning to think <laughs> I got sold the wrong one. Um, <clears throat> it's just, boy, it's tight, tight, tight. So three brackets on the transmission lines. These cords got to go up. These little uh, cords got to go up on top of the shock tower. These transmission lines got to get pushed forward. And then in my case, I took that fourth bolt off the exhaust manifold on the interior side. It'd be on the in inside of that and I unscrewed it, and then there was enough room to attach it once these other three were bolted down, which are coming from the turbo side. So uh, other than that, the performance of the turbo is fantastic. Uh, it seems to build boost just a little bit quicker. Um, they had a, ATS has a couple videos online on YouTube and so forth, and <clears throat> these guys, they really went through it and tried to work out all the kinks, and boy, I'm really happy with the turbo so far. So uh, mileage gain, uh, it's going to be pretty minimal, but it does seem to have an improvement so far. Uh, I think I was somewhere around uh, maybe 15 to 16 driving empty in town, and then now I'm 17 plus. Uh, the turbo, like I said, it builds boost a little bit stronger, a little bit quicker. Uh, the exhaust brake is every bit as good as the factory, if not maybe a little better. And uh, it does have a whistle to it, so um, for those of you that like turbo whistle, I know I do. It is pretty nice so and then there's that uh, hot side aftermarket uh, intercooler tube and as you can see there's plenty of clearance and <clears throat> all the bends and they give you new intercooler boots uh, quite a bit heavier duty than the than the factory style and then I'm a big fan of those intercooler clamps with the tension spring on it so it just really feels uh, pretty solid so anyhow I'll give you guys another post uh, maybe about four or 5,000 miles from here and share my results on towing the trailer and, and uh, how we like the turbo so far. I'm sure it's going to be pretty good, but just want to share those because I enjoy uh, reading other people's experiences too. So, and then we ended up trying the aftermarket SMB airbox. <clears throat> Factory one was a pretty nice little unit, but this uh, filter, this seems to have 360 degrees of uh, space available for air to get in there and so forth so I figured on all the dusty roads that we're on all the time it'll just help that filter last a little bit longer and uh, give the engine a little bit more life to breathe but on this truck we're running a tune from calibrated power so we have all our emissions on the truck um, man it just runs really strong and uh, really happy with it so well I hope you guys enjoy <laughs> 